Ernie Banks delighted Wrigley Field fans with his long home runs, steady fielding, and cheerful disposition. After spending two years in the Negro American League with the Kansas City Monarchs, Mr. Cub belted 512 home runs in the major leagues. Five times he hit over belted a record 47 round trippers in 1958. He also became the first National Leaguer to win the MVP award in consecutive years in 1958 and 59. Banks' love for the game is still exemplified by his signature phrase, let's play two. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1977. What's going on, Sports Cars fans? Ray from Philly here on Friday night, November 5th. It's Friday Night Vintage. I look forward to this every week. I got a humongous pickup for me today. Uh, this card covers quite a few PSA set registries for me. It, number one covers the 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by Mike Payne. This here is my 192nd card for that set, so I'm clo closely getting closer to 200 which I when I first started this set <clears throat> I think in 2015 I never thought that I would get to 200 so let alone definitely not 300 but I'm closing in on 200 cards so I'm, I'm uh, pretty thrilled about that this uh, card also covers my post-war rookie hall of fame set registry there's 108 cards in that set this is my 91st um, it covers the first ballot post-war rookie Hall of Fame. It covers an all-star card, Born Memories, because it's just a, it's, you know, it's a popular card. So, without further ado, I'm stoked to have this card, I'm telling you right now. It's a 1954 Tops of none other than Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. In the new lighthouse holder and a PSA 1. And for a 1, looks good. There's the front, there's the back, there's uh, no creasing on this whatsoever. Oh, well, let me re repeat that, <laughs> rephrase that, I'm trying to get something off the back here. To be quite honest with you, there's just soft corners on this. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks really good for a 1. Cards have gone up so much in the past year and a half since the pandemic started. Uh, when I was first eyeing this card, I don't know, two and a half years ago, I was looking to get this in a four. And I'm paid now, the price of years ago, what it was for a four is what I paid now for a one. So the fours now are going for about $1,000 or more. But at this point, when you get cards to this age, say from before 1960, when they're uh, iconic type cards like this, it's about ownership, and it's not about the grade. And I'm thrilled, thrilled. I have no problem, absolutely no problem with owning this card in a one. Looks great. I'm thrilled to have it. It's known for having a lot of snowing on his face, and there's only a little bit right there, as you can see on the forehead, but not much at all. The centering, since there's no borders on this, you always could tell by the name on the top. If the name Ernie Banks is kind of cut into the letters, then you know it's all centered. This doesn't cut into the letters whatsoever. So like I said, it's, it's just really rounded corners and soft corners. And if you can get a card, something like this, like an Aaron Rookie or K-Line or Musual or anything pre-war and a one that looks good, get it i mean don't worry about the grade just get the card so i'm absolutely thrilled i'm going to flip the phone around give you guys a closer look 
and Mr. Cub, none other than Ernie Banks. So hold on. All right, all right. Here we go. Closer look at the Banks rookie. And I'm telling you, it looks... <laughs> I'm really excited to have this. It's known... I've, I've seen lots of these cars where the forehead and his face has a lot of this white flaky snowing on there. And like I said, it just has a little bit there. This corner here is really, really rounded. But I will take a rounded corner if, you know, a rounded corner card, if it's centered well and it doesn't have massive creases in it, like this morning, noon, and night. And like I said, this here is my 192nd card for the 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by Mike Payne. This, this also covers my post-war rookie Hall of Fame set registry. And that is my 91st card for that set. And you know the deal. We're going to go over to the Mike Payne book and read the excerpt from his book to see what Mr. Payne has to say about this iconic card. And just trying to find it. Here it is. So we're going to move on over to the book. And I'm actually doing really well with these two pages. I have the Lasorda rookie. I have the 55 Bowman Aaron. I have the O'Brien brothers, the K-Line. Do not have the Jackie Robinson. But here is the Ernie Banks rook. Let me get this in a little better focus. 1954 tops Ernie Banks, card number 94. With all due respect to Gabby Hartnett, Billy Williams, Ryan Sandberg, Andre Dawson, and Sammy Sosa, and his 66, Ernie Banks is the most popular cubby ever to take his cuts in Wrigley. Banks won back-to-back -back MVP awards 1958-59, whacked 512 career home runs, was named to 11 All-Star teams, and kept his smile even in the down years. And there were plenty of those during Banks' uh, tenure on the north side. Clearly, this rookie card will cost the collector a bit more than a couple bleacher seats this side of Waveland or Sheffield Avenue. I was reading a book recently, too, when he was when uh, Leo DeRocher took over as manager in the 60s. He was really hard on Ernie Banks, who's just a nice guy. And it's a shame that a player like this didn't get a chance to play in a World Series. Uh, there's quite a few legendary, iconic players that didn't get a chance to play in the World Series. And it's really hard to understand because those Cubs teams with Ron Santo, Billy Williams, Ferguson Jenkins, they had a lot of good players. So, But the thing is, is that during that time, you know, the Cubs were a really good team, but there was just great teams. The Giants were really good. The Dodgers were really good with Drysdale and Koufax. The Giants were good with Willie Mays and Cepeda and McCovey. The Cardinals were fantastic. They went to two World Series. It, it was just on and on and on. As good as the Cubs were, they were probably the fourth best team in the National League in the 60s. That's how dominating the National League was in the 60s. All right, so there you have it. I'm... <laughs> incredibly happy and, and stoked to add the Banks rookie. And I'm going to now go to the computer and give you guys a look at his numbers, his career statistics and accomplishments. So hold on. Okay, so take a look at these numbers. Like I said, he was a two-time MVP. Won it in, I think it was 58 and 59. Yep. 58-59, he was the first National Leaguer to win back-to-back -back MVPs. Uh, baseball Reference says 14-time All-Star, Gold Glove Award winner, 2,583 career hits, 512 career home runs, a 274 career batting average, 1,305 runs scored, 1,636 RBI, a 122 OPS plus, Numbers just go on and on. Led the league in home runs twice in 58 with 47 homers and in 60 for 41 with 41 homers. Led the league in RBIs twice in 58 and 59. And this was a shortstop too, don't forget. This was a shortstop that we saw like none other. Uh, he was the first power hitting shortstop that can belt him out. And I don't care about Wrigley Field, Wrigley Field or not. You know Banks was going to crush it anywhere, anywhere he played. So 
he was just, I think, actually, I think an underrated shortstop. He did move to first base later on in his career towards the late 60s uh, because he was just, he had some injuries, I think, in his ankle and knees and stuff like that. So they had to move him to first base. But he was just a fantastic all-around great power-hitting shortstop and a classy gentleman and a classy man. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to read the book called Let's Play 2, of course, about Ernie Banks. So that's it. There you have it. I'm going to give you another closer look here at the 54 tops Ernie Banks rookie to PSA 1. This here is my 192nd card for the uh, 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by Mike Payne. I've said that so many times. And the 91st card for the post-war rookie Hall of Fame. There you go. There you go, guys. I had it. There, there you have it. Right from Philly. Appreciate you guys watching. And I'm going to leave you with this little tidbit video of the 500th career home run at Wrigley Field by Ernie Banks, called by great Cubs announcer, no, not Harry Carey, Jack Brickhouse. So take care, guys. And like I always say, have fun with it. See you real soon.